What's up, guys? I'm Sam. I just want to talk a little bit about my recent perspectives and realizations um, in mother culture, about mother culture, and this in modern Western civilization. Just a couple of experiences I've had in the past few weeks. Um, I go to Northeastern University in Boston, and one thing that's very striking is that all the students aren't happy and they're not joyful, and they don't have any purpose, and they're walking around without any enthusiasm or energy, as if there's, you know, it's such a, it's such a burden going to classes, you know, they can't, they can't wait to get out of them, so they can get their A, and just move on with life, and go home and watch Gossip Girl, or do other things that they'd much rather do, so, you know, I see people without any Without any energy, and people are all burned out and exhausted and anxious and distressed. And it's not limited to the confines of universities. You know, it's people, everyday, everyday people working in jobs and and you know, it's it's a sad thing. Rates of depression, and mental illness are increasing every year, and people are so tired and apathetic and, and deadened that. It seems as if we're not really doing anything anymore. We're kind of robots, just sacks of flesh walking around and following some guidelines that we don't even really enjoy and we don't like. They're just given to us through society. So, you know, we're not actualizing our, our inner spiritual components. We're not, we're not having a good time. We're, we're all too gratified to accept quick entertainment and television and, and drugs. Um, and we're living for the weekends. And all these things never quite seem to satisfy us. Our, our desires to, to escape this, our daily lives that, and the present reality that isn't all that we hoped it could be. Um, but, you know... Don't we have it all, people ask? Like, we've got frost-free refrigerators, we've got microwaves, we've got air-conditioned SUVs, we've got satellite television and direct TV with 500,000 million trillion bazillion gazillion channels for entertainment. We've got cell phones, there's never a time when we can't communicate with each other. We've got pesticides and antibiotics so we can receive our vegetables and fruits from 5,000 miles away. You know, but despite all this stuff, and despite the constant, unabated growth of technology, there exists a certain vacuity within each of us. You know, it's, it's kind of an expanding rupture in our, our human psyche and our collective, primal, subconscious that connects us with the world. Um, I, I was driving the other day in Pittsburgh, where I live, and I saw... I saw a billboard from AirTran, and it said, Why not have Wi-Fi in the air? Question mark. And that's just ridiculous, number one. And number two is, it occurred to me that the phrase, Why not, has become such predominant credo and ideology within modern civilization and Western culture. And even, it's, it's even exacerbated by, by the blueprints of American materialism. Um, I'm, and I'm not so sure we even want to answer this question. Why not? You know, the, the thought that there exist any restraints or limits to our actions whatsoever is just ludicrous to, to a lot of people. Um, but we, we extrapolate the phrase to so many different things, you know. Like, why not pave over ecosystems to supply ourselves with roads and transportation infrastructure, you know? Why not spew toxins into the air from vehicles, factories, and food production? Why not adopt free market economic policies and give corporations the rights of humans? You know, we, we can do all these things, why not do them? But, guys, that, that time's passed when we can continue to do these things just because we're capable of them. We've got to be accountable for our actions. Um, you know, we, we've got to alter the very cultural blueprints and templates that guide us in society, that guide our values, our morals, our principles, our ethics, 
And we have to feel it within our bodies, because unless we do, then we're going to be doing things half-heartedly, and it's not going to be genuine. And we need that. We can't... That's why a lot of our reforms and, and um, political agendas don't work, because they're within the confines and construct of culture and civilization. And these things don't work because civilization is inherently unsustainable. And, you know, there, there is, there will be poverty in the capitalist system. So, that's the first thing. Um, now, I really like this quote from um, Michael Bell, and, and he says, what we believe depends on what we see and feel, and what we see and feel depends on what we believe. So, I just thought of this, and I realized, you know, like in today's modern civilization, um, you know, we, we hardly see and feel anything, or at least anything that has any semblance of, of profundity or, or truth. You know, our senses have been deadened, our, our hearts desensitized, we're no longer connected to the earth, and our, our relationship, the relationship between man and nature has become solemn and obscure. Um, you know, we've, we've got to reconnect with ourselves and reconnect our, our perceptions and the actions that follow these perceptions with the health of the planet. And there won't be any need for, for capitalism, government, or economics, or police, or laws, or environmental regulations, or, or trade embargoes, or microfinance or any other power structure that exists to keep things in order. There'd be no disorder in, in such a world where we give, where there's a reciprocity between us and other living things. Um, you know, and of course we can't solve the world's problems with, with these rosy, reassuring words that conjure up blind optimism, some would say, but but we can begin to identify the rationales to our actions and the ideologies that influence the measures of, of a brutally destructive culture. Um, you know, if we really wanted to, to solve a lot of these problems, we would. And I don't like when politicians and, and other people in, a, in authority, uh, positions of authority, say they want to solve these things. If we wanted to end poverty, we would. If we wanted to end environmental catastrophe, we would. If the top 2% of the world's wealth wanted to spread their resources equitably, they would. If the U.S. wanted to stop spending $700 million on nuclear attack submarines and send 5 million third world children to school for a year, it would. If we wanted to stop spending $300 million on every B-1 bomber jet and provide basic immunization treatments to the 600 million children in the world who lack them, we would. If the world wanted to stop spending what it spends on defense every 40 hours, which is, by the way, $4.6 billion, we would. You know, and with that amount, by the way, we could provide sanitary water for every human being who currently lacks it. We don't live in some evil cruel world of brutality and injustice. We've just made it that way ourselves. You know, is it really fair that multinational corporations have the ability under capitalism to extract resources from third world countries and export them back to the developed world, leaving billions starving and left only with the consolation? You know, sorry, that's just free trade. You know, is it really any surprise that two-fifths of the world lives in extreme poverty? When we're sitting here in, in the U.S., you know, eating, eating steak delivered to us by clear-cutting the Amazon rainforest, which is home to countless humans and non-humans, um, to make room for egregious cattle ranching and factory farming that pollutes the environment, I mean...